everyone. Welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. This is the third of our Summer Reading 2020 series, Imagine Your Story. As you can see, Library Bear has gotten into the spirit of things. He has brought along his silk jacket and his crane fan. You can see the two cranes flying. Now, this crane fan is very important for today's story because today we have a Japanese fairy tale uh, for you called The Crane Wife. And then we have a craft afterwards, so make sure you stay on for that. So The Crane Wife uh, is, as I said, a Japanese fairy tale. This is retold by Odds Bodkin, and the illustrations are by Gennady Spirin. You can see the crane flying off there. So, this is a very old story and I just, I love the illustrations in this story. Let's see if I can get them without glare on them. They're so beautiful. And here we go. Once, in ancient Japan, there lived a lonely sailmaker named Osamu. Osamu's house was built high above the sea on a hilltop. From where he sat, weaving his sails, Osamu could see the green salt marsh below, dotted with white cranes. As he pulled the rat, the warp and weft of his sail fabric together, he would often think to himself, how beautiful the cranes are. Of all the birds, they are the most like sails. It is as if the wind is held in their wings. All his life, Osamu had wished for a wife to comfort his lonely hours at the loom. But, with one rice steamer, one pot for making tea, and little else, he knew his chances of finding a wife to live with him were small. Autumn came, the season of storms. Red leaves fell on the dark wood of his porch. One night, as the winds howled, Osama heard something strike his door. Curious, he looked out. There lay a great crane, stunned and still. Oh, poor bird, he cried, kneeling. Osamu carefully folded the crane's crumpled wings and carried it inside. How light it was, so delicate. Amazed, he warmed the beautiful creature by his fire, caressing its wings. Soon, its black, shining eyes opened. For three days, Osamu nursed the crane back to health. Then he watched it soar away. Let's see if we can get closer on this picture. Time passed, and one night, a great storm blew in from the sea. Those, through the sound of the pelting rain, Osamu heard a knocking on his door. Who is there? called Osamu, peering out. A beautiful young woman gazed up at him, her black eyes shining. Who are you? gasped Osamu. Help me, cried the young woman, shivering in her wet garments. Oh, forgive me, please come in. Osamu bowed and stared as she stepped inside. Never in all his life had he stood close to so be beautiful a young woman. Osamu served the young woman tea and rice and a little bit of the precious fish given to him by the fishermen in the harbor. Gradually, she stopped shivering. They knelt across from each other. The lamp flame flickered. Finally, he found words. How had she come to him in the storm? Where was her family? Where was her home? 
Osamu asked her many questions, but all the young woman would tell him was that her name was Yukiko. Time passed. Frost covered the black twigs outside Osamu's windows. And still Yukiko had not left. It was beyond Osamu's wildest hope to think that she might stay. He was afraid to ask her to marry him. He had so little. Yet, as the days passed, a love grew between them. With no words spoken, Yukiko became his wife. But Osamu was still just a poor sailmaker. And it came to a time in the little house above the marsh when there was not enough food for the two of them to eat. Yukiko saw this. She came to him one day and said, Husband, I will weave you a magic sail that you may take and sell in the village below. You can weave a magic sail? She pulled the dressing screen across the room, hiding the loom, which sat near the window. Yes, but you must promise never to look at me as I work, she said. Why? Osamu asked. Promise me, Yukiko insisted, and Osamu promised. Yukiko began to work. Osamu could hear the shuttle sliding and the loom rocking. Hours passed. Night fell. Osamu slept. At dawn, Yukiko was still working behind the screen. When at last she appeared, Yukiko looked very tired. That's natural, Osamu thought. She has worked all night long. But when Yukiko placed the sail in his arms, Osamu forgot everything. Though immensely strong, the sail weighed nearly nothing at all. A sound like faraway whispering lifted from the folds. Osamu put his ear to the sail. His eyes went wide. Yukiko had woven in the wind. Osamu ran to the harbor with the magic sail, showed it to all, and was paid enough gold to live for half a year. Overjoyed, he ran home. Yukiko smiled. Time passed. Springtime came. Rain fell, and the marsh again bloomed green. The white cranes returned. Yukiko and Osamu could hear their calls. It was late spring that the gold ran out. Once again, Osamu and Yukiko grew hungry. Osamu said, Yukiko, you should weave another magic sail. Oh, husband, I cannot, she replied. It takes all that I am to weave such sails. I am afraid to weave another. But wife, please, one more. I will never ask again. Yukiko loved him. Do not watch me then, she said, and she disappeared behind the screen. All day passed. Yukiko, Osamu called, do you want water? Do you want rice? The only answer was the sound of the loom rocking. At the end of two days, Yukiko emerged exhausted, holding a second sail. More beautiful than the first, it too held the wind. Thinking only of gold, Osamu ran to the village and sold the magic sail. Everyone talked of Osamu's skill, for he had told no one it was Yukiko who had made the sails. Again, he was paid enough gold to last six long months. Time passed. Autumn returned, the season of storms. The cranes in the marsh grew restless. Their feathers ruffled in the bending grasses and flying leaves. One day, Osamu was visiting the village when a great trading ship docked in the harbor. From it strode a tall captain, a wealthy trader. The captain questioned the fishermen in the harbor, and they all pointed to Osamu. I have sailed a great distance to find you, Osamu, said the captain. I want you to weave a magic sail for my ship. Osamu thought of Yukiko and the promise he had made. I cannot, he replied. The two I made are the only two I shall ever make. The captain laughed. Make me a sail, Osamu, and I will pay you a lifetime's gold. You shall never work again. A lifetime's gold, thought Osamu. Imagine. Home he ran. Yukiko, he called. 
There is a man in the harbor who will give us a lifetime's gold. He stopped in the door. If you will weave one more sail. Fear swept across Yukiko's face. Osamu, no, I am afraid. Yukiko, a lifetime's gold. Don't you see we will never want for tea or rice again. But these sails, they take so much from me, she pleaded. It is my very self they take. Osamu frowned at Yukiko. I am your husband, he said, his voice growling loud. I command you. Yukiko began to weep. Very well, she said, trembling, but promise you will not look at me. I promise. Now go, make my sail. Yukiko pulled the screen before the loom and disappeared. Outside, Osamu paced his porch. He could see the ship at anchor in the harbor waiting. A day passed, then another. Still, Yukiko worked. A third day dawned. Never had she worked so long. What is she doing? Osamu wondered. Yukiko, he called. Do you want water? Do you want rice? But she gave no answer. Why, wondered Osamu, should only Yukiko know how to weave magic sails? Why could he not learn the secret of weaving in the wind? Then he could make many magic sails, and he could save Yukiko the work she did not wish to do. Osamu could hear the shuttle sliding and the loom rocking. Yukiko, answer me! Unable to contain himself, Osamu ran around the screen. A long beak swung toward him. Sad black eyes gleamed at him. There stood the crane he had saved in the storm. Yukiko! The bird was weaving its white feathers into the sail on the loom. Filled with sea wind, the feathers were trembling. Yukiko, Osamu cried. But the only answer his crane wife could give was a soft, strange sound, like a cat purring in bamboo reeds. Then Yukiko spread her tattered wings, lifting herself through the window and into the sky. Never again did Osamu see her. He wove simple sails for the rest of his years. There at his window, gazing at the marsh and the white cranes, and each autumn in the season of storms, he waited for a knock on his door. Well, I hope you enjoyed that retelling of The Crane Wife by Odds Bodkin with illustrations by Gennady Spirin. Some of these images are quite beautiful. And for our craft this time, you are going to make a pair of paper dolls. <laughs> now, I know that sounds a little strange, but they're going to be Japanese style dolls. So you're going to receive in your kit a strip of paper that's brown or ivory and a piece of paper, sorry, this one's already glued on, um, of a different color. Then you'll receive two pieces of origami style paper. Yours will be flat, not folded yet. You'll receive a strip of paper that matches the one that goes across here. You'll receive a round piece of paper that will be the head and then you'll receive some black pieces of paper and that will be the hair. So this is the body of this. You're going to take your first strip of paper and you're going to use a glue stick. You can see my glue there and you're going to fold that piece of paper. It's going to take a little bit of a trick to unfold it. So what you do is find the center of the paper and then you fold over the, um, as you're looking at it, it'll be the left hand side and then fold the right hand side over it at an angle like that and you'll glue it in place. It'll look a little bit like a necktie at this point. 
Then you're going to take the larger of the two sheets of paper and you're going to fold it over about that much. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to be exact. And then you're going to fold that piece up so it's covered and you'll have what amounts to like an accordion fold. You can glue those two pieces down and that's fine. Then you can sort of fold it in half like this and just pinch it a little bit to find the center. And you can open it back up again. And this piece that you've already got glued is going to go in the center here. You're going to put it so that in the back you can see this at the top. That'll be like the collar of this kimono. And then you're going to fold in what for you is going to be the left side and just give it a nice crease at an angle like that and then fold in the left side. Now if you don't get it exactly right at the time, that's okay. So it's going to look like this, okay? Give it a nice crease and you can glue that down. Then you're going to take this side and you're going to fold it straight down. You can match the bottom edges to make sure you've got it straight. And you can glue that down as well. I should have brought my glue stick, shouldn't I? I thought about it. Then you're going to fold in the other side down to the bottom as well so that it overlaps. You want to be careful so that if this were a person, that the left side of the kimono will be folded over top of the right side. That's how Japanese people wear their kimonos. So now you have this piece sticking out, and that's where the head is going to go. Now, every kimono has an obi. So I'm going to take my strip of matching paper, see how it matches the collar? It's the same color there. Uh, and yours are not necessarily going to be these colors. They're going to be all kinds of colors. So you'll just have to wait and see what you get in your kit. But you're going to fold that so that it goes straight across the front, um, a little bit below what you think the arms would be. And see how it overlaps in the back, and that's okay. You're going to glue that as well. Okay. Then I'm going to put this one down for just a minute. And I'm going to take my smaller piece of paper. Instead of using it lengthwise, I'm going to use it widthwise. And I'm going to fold it and just crease it like that. Okay, and then I'm going to also find the center. There we go. This is going to be the sleeves of your kimono. All right, so I'm going to take my paper doll again and I'm going to find the center of this. And again, I'm going to fold from this side down and glue that and also fold this side down. And you can give that a good crease. I'm gonna put this OB down a little bit, the sash down. And there, once you've got that glued, you've got your doll with the kimono and the sleeves. Now, the head, we're going to glue on the top here. Okay, just like that. And you can draw eyes if you want. Now, for it, you're going to get two kinds of black paper. So one piece will be like this. And you're going to put the face on that. Okay. And then you'll get another black piece that you can glue on like this. Now, if you don't want the hair to be that much in the face, you can always cut that shorter. But for a female doll, you just see how before you glue it completely down, you just slide that in. And then you've got your doll and the female doll has long hair in the, black, in the back. No, that's not going to show like that, but there you go. So long black hair.
Oh, and I lost her front hair, but you're going to glue that down. If you want to, you can add eyes and a mouth. You can put the hair at an angle if you want, so it looks like she's tilting her head. <clears throat> now, men and women both wore kimonos in old Japan. So if you want to make this doll, you'll, you'll receive one of each, and you can decide which one is which. But you're going to receive a piece of round black paper. And once you glue on the head, you glue that on the back, like that. And men wore their hair a little bit differently from the women. So it had a little top knot there. And we're going to glue that on the front, and you can make it. And then your doll is male. So you've got sort of your Osamu doll and your Yukiko doll. And you'll get different colors of paper in your kit. Let me just show you in the book. Um, Osamu's hair. I think you can see it. Here we go. See how he's got his hair? up in that bun. Now if you want, you can put a little piece of color across that knob. You can use like a marker or a colored pencil or something. And you can, of course, cut his bangs if you want. Make it a little spiky, depending on how you want it. Well, these materials will be available in the library. Uh, let's see, so Wednesday is going to be June 8th, I believe, so they'll be available for two weeks, and you can come pick them up. They'll be labeled week three, the crane wife. Well, thank you for reading with us this Wednesday um, for Imagine Your Story. I'm Youth Services Librarian Glenna Coleman, and... Um, you or your parents can go online and find all kinds of directions for making uh, paper dolls out of origami paper. Um, but you'll receive the basics and you can always look back and uh, to this video and see about folding them. So Library Bear, thank you for bringing your crane fan for the crane wife. And we'll say goodbye until next time.